we've come to Seven Stains Trail Centre in Maybe to talk you through some of the physics involved in mountain biking. There's some really interesting physics principles uh, that hopefully are going to be useful for your GCSE or A-level physics, whichever one you're studying. Gorilla physics! Yeah. Now I've uh, just stopped to fix my wife's brakes, actually she did this bit uh, before without her working front brake. I just thought I'd stop and talk to you a little bit about momentum. What momentum is, is it's a mass times a velocity. And what it means is, is kind of how hard it is to stop you. The more momentum you have, the harder it is to stop. So here's Steph coming over the drop off there. So in mountain biking we have a saying which is that mo is your friend. So as um, Newton's third law is the law of conservation of momentum, the bike and you are going to carry on doing whatever you were doing before. So if you have a high enough momentum then you're going to be steadier through the obstacles like the drop off there. Whereas if you aren't confident enough to build up enough speed then you're going to see it's going to, the bike's going to be a bit more shaky through that and it's not going to just behave as you want it to. You, you don't want it to stop going down the hill, you want it to carry on. So remember, Mo is your friend. So this is a good example of when we're talking about how you need to maintain your momentum from one obstacle into another. So here is a kind of short, short bit of North Shore and then a really good place where you can um, catch your front wheel and if you're not careful you won't have enough momentum to get over this and you're going to have an uncomfortable time. So if you're not carrying enough momentum through there, then your bike's going to become unstable and you're going to have a bit of a problem. And um, I did a little one of these earlier on today actually, and I've done a really bad one before. Sometimes you can get the momentum wrong, and if you get the wheel down into a wheel rut, so often there'll be a wheel rut just after the obstacle here, and um, the wheel goes in, suspension depresses, Mo comes back with a bit of a vengeance and the back of the bike just keeps on going and that's that's a time when Mo can act against you so it's about judging it right different speeds for different ones he's a and where it's, he's a friend of me and where it's really useful is when um, having the right momentum having enough momentum is when you're linking one obstacle into another so you've got to make sure you look further down the track and uh, make sure you anticipate what's coming one more thing about why these bikes um, that my wife and I ride are better at descending than they are at climbing. Well, they're, they're a bit heavier than a normal cross-country bike. They're, they're all mountain. They're designed to do up and down. But really, they're better coming down the hill than um, going up it. And a big part of that is where the weight is and how much weight there is. So I've talked about momentum being mass times the velocity. So greater mass means that it's going to have more of that momentum going down the hill and it's going to be less likely to deviate when, let's say, you catch a rock or anything like that or a, a root. It's going to keep on doing what it was doing before. That's a uh, Newton law. And also the weight, you can see, is quite low down on the bike and that's meaning a lower centre of gravity, a lower centre of mass, therefore a more stable bike. Another reason why it's good for descending is the width of the handlebars. So, as you're coming down the hill, you want to be using a large enough, a lar as large as possible moment to keep the bike pointing where you're directing it. So any force here is multiplied by the distance from this centre point, which is the pivot there. So that means having a nice wide handlebars means as we're coming down, any little bits we're catching, we're able to keep the bike pointing where we were pointing it before. It does have a downside though, because when you're climbing, well, that any tiny little motions on it means the bike's very twitchy. So a cross-country mountain bike is going to have a slightly uh, narrower um, handlebars than something that's designed more for uh, coming down the hill, descending. This video is part of a little mini-series of the physics of mountain biking, so if you like this video, then please check out the rest. And if you did like the video, then if I earned your subscription, please subscribe to Gorilla Physics. There'll be plenty more past papers help for your physics GCSEs and A-levels.